Then, this is super important, end the goddamn occupation. There ended. is an ended. occupation in Gaza. I'll oh, say it ben, from the day of Gaza. Don't be insane, there Ben. There is a security don't and, be and, 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 and blockade of supplies. There is not an occupation. They voluntarily ended it in 2005 and removed forcibly their own Israeli citizens. Hey. How are you going to ask people to end an occupation that ended in 2005? And at least let's use words accurately. Because I've seen too many times on this network people saying genocide when it is not one. People yes. saying occupation when it is not one. Does the heated debate get us to a better place or is it calm and measured debate would get us to a better place? If this was a calm debate, we wouldn't have watched it. Israel, um, Israel's humanitarian pause leads to heated debate between TYT hosts. Right. So they brought this guy right at, on right after October 7th. Mm -hmm. Which I actually thought was a pretty good move for TYT because they did give both mm -hmm. perspectives a fair hearing, I thought. Right. I got to admit, I was a little nervous. You know, October 7th happens. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hmm, what's TYT's coverage going to be like on this? You know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about TYT. Since, you know, good. Anna and I have sort of become... Uh, friends and she seems to be making a, a huge effort to kind of be less ideologically possessed. be based yeah at the network so yeah yeah and i'm pulling for her, obviously so the guy's name is ben gleb i believe is how you pronounce it yeah there you go all right let's check it out let's Hit check it, it out let's see what happens here or retribution, they were bombing these buildings. And while again, I'll say it every time, the, the innocent loss of life has been horrific. It was not for no reason and it was not indiscriminately. It was to get rid of strongholds, buildings that they knew had Hamas strongholds in them so that when they go in with the ground troops that you yourself were suggesting were a better idea and are a better idea that they aren't a complete suicide mission for the Israeli troops. Also, in the immediate aftermath of October 7th, you said, of course, Israel has to respond and is going to bomb. It just, you hope that it's not a hugely disproportional number. You said, I hope it's not 10 to 1, 100 to 1. The numbers have been horrible. They've been 5 to 1 or 6 to 1. That's not good, but it's because we're trying to take out a terrorist force that yeah. also is a government. And so I do not buy the argument that there is ever going to be a solution where you just say Hamas gets to win. And so I think a much smarter way to approach trying to get what they you want. They don't get to win, Ben. They don't get to win. So look, at the end of the day, so look, two last things, and then I, you got more of the story. But a smarter us. part, what I'm saying, a smarter part, to, a way to do that is to not demonize people that are responding from this horrible terror attack, but instead say, great, thank you for a four hour every single day during war humanitarian pause and an extra humanitarian corridor actually turn the rhetoric towards something that is more inclusive and more positive and say we are moving towards the right direction, not immediately on day one saying that's not real. Maybe it's a tiny bit real, but it's not real. No, it's a major significant change in the conditions on the ground. It's the it's Israel going against what it believes its objectives need to be to listen to the world community, to give opportunities for aid to come in. That's the big source of outcry from all of the groups saying it's civilians are being killed. So let the civilians out. So they're doing that. Extra humanitarian They're not quarter. letting anybody out. Gaza's in a prison. They, they, you can't leave because Gaza. Egypt will not open their that, border. That's to ridiculous. If Egypt opens the borders and the Palestinians go to Egypt, Israel's going to close the border and just take Gaza. No way. That's crazy. I, no way. It's no way. Up to Egypt not, to keep that border no, open or not. But certainly no, they're not going to open no, the border. Okay, so to add some context here. So uh, Israel agreed to do daily four hour pauses on the assault. Um, and that's what they're that's what they're arguing about, um, which obviously Jank doesn't think you know matters or is not enough. But it's, it's an interesting argument here, which is so Ben is saying, you know, Egypt should allow them to go to go to Egypt. And Jank's response to that is if the, if they leave the country fully, it sounds like what he's saying is that if the, if the Palestinians leave the country and go to Egypt, that Israel will just take over the area and and not let them back in. I think that's what he's saying his argument is. Right, yeah, not let them return to their homes. Which, you know- um, <laughs> Do you know if the answer to that? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, the problem is like, so obviously, you know, that's harkening back to like 1948. 
right? Where that literally happened in 1948, where the people left their homes and they were not allowed back in. Um, I'm skept- I'm more skeptical. It's not possible, but I'm more skeptical that that situation could be repeated today. Or if you had like hundreds of thousands, if not a million or so people leave Gaza and go to Egypt, that, that Israel would just be like, oh, you can't come in anymore. Because if they did that, first of all, if they did that, they would literally just destroy their relationship with Egypt forever. Egypt does not want, you know, 2 million refugees, right? Right. Yeah. You know, uh, so I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm a little bit skeptical that that would happen. But, Israel know, has said wrong. that won't happen. Israel has said they're, they don't want to occupy Gaza. They want to root out Hamas and leave. They've said they don't plan on occupation. They don't plan on taking land. This is what they're saying. So, well, I don't, it depends what they mean. Like, here's the thing. Uh, yeah, I think they don't want to hold it for. I don't know that I, they can do that in all yeah, honesty. Like, right, I mean, right. that seems like a pipe dream to me. But I, I'd be curious as to what their exact language is because I don't think I would, I would probably wager that their statement would be something like, yeah, we don't want to occupy Gaza forever we don't want to absorb like absorb it into becoming israel um because they don't you know i understand they don't want to do that but they are going to basically occupy it to an extent of saying hamas will no longer be the government like i don't believe and if this was israel's military goal they're stupid but i don't believe israel's military goal is to go in there kill hamas and then just leave i believe their goal yeah i believe their goal is to go in there kill hamas and then basically take over the region or make the PA take over the region and basically act as security to force the PA to take over the, the region. Because they can't just leave and allow Hamas 2.0 to take over. They have to make sure that they have some other form of government. Hamas is the security force there. They have to right. s- establish some sort of security force. I understand yeah. that it's the mob, basically, right? right. But they are the ones that are are saying, you know, don't kill one another or we'll kill you. Right. So, I I mean, I do believe that they are going to completely, they are going to occupy the area, but, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't let people back into the country necessarily. So. I don't know. It's, you know, obviously we're very cautious about what we're saying here. It's interesting that neither one of them are very cautious about what they're saying. Like they're just no. This is a fact. This is what's going to happen. Well, I mean, that's honestly that's like most people talking about what? very, uh, you know, um, emotional. I mean, this is, this is a very emotional topic, obviously, very extreme topic. I don't. I don't think know that's the answer. I mean, just to I, make declarations. I like, mean, this is. We don't know the facts on this. Well, I don't, I'm not sure you can even know the facts on right, this. right, right. You know, I'm. That's what I'm saying. I don't think Israel would like if if a million people left Gaza and went to Egypt. Like Israel wanted them to, I don't believe Israel would or even has the ability to uh, deny them back in. I think that'd be just so devastating um, to their image, to their relationship with Egypt, to their relationship with the U.S. and the rest of the world. That I don't think they have the the political capital to do such an action. But I am sympathetic to the fear of it because Israel has literally done that in the past. So. Yeah, I get that. I totally right. get that. They don't know. Right. You'd be nervous. Look, you're nervous if you're there already and you're forced to leave your home. I mean, I've seen some of the videos. It's just, it's crazy. It is, they've yeah. turned, they've just turned the buildings into rubble. What do these people even have to go back to? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good point. I mean, if you, it's, it is devastating for these people yeah. to live in these areas. Into their own country. No, Israel and Egypt have an alliance, and that's why it been. Look, so we have massive disagreements. So when it, at one point they had about eight thousand civilians killed and thirteen Hamas members killed. No, they weren't trying to bomb Hamas. They were doing indiscriminate bombing. Thirteen Hamas in members discriminate. killed. Where are you getting that number? I got it from a news report. We Hamas, reported on it. Hamas does not distinguish in their numbers between Hamas soldiers and civilians. You have no idea how many Hamas soldiers were killed Even in that Even Netanyahu, at one point, and he's a grotesque liar, said, 
uh, in an ABC report, well, 10,000 were killed, but you know, a thousand of those could have been Hamas. <laughs> could have been, could have been. And if that's true, but you take Netanyahu's numbers, that's still awful. You, if I, if you said to me that I've said this a hundred times, hey, that guy killed your family members. There's no way that I don't want to kill that guy. I, I, I'm, I will be filled with rage. And you say there's nine civilians around them, an aunt, an uncle, a grandma, a baby, etc. Would I bomb them and kill those nine civilians because to get the bad guy? Never. Never, because it is deeply immoral. I'm not going to do the same thing a terrorist would do. That's insanity. And and Israel's saying, yeah, I don't care. I don't care about the ratio. I dropped the bombs. I dropped the bombs. The buildings collapsed. The baby's heads are crushed. But they yeah. are. Defense. That is the lie. That's not defense. That is the That's lie. offense. But they are not saying that. They are taking mo far more measures than any country that That's I know of to true. make sure the civilians no, leave they, the area. They take the least they, amount of measures. They make phone of calls any directly. Country. They drop any out of this guy. We're both pausing at the same time. Who's saying, yay, yay, we're killing a bunch of civilians? I don't feel like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure there's some people in Israel saying that. I don't think that's, I don't think that's what the Israeli military is operating under a principle of, of yay, yay, we're killing babies and civilians, obviously. Right. Yeah. And they, I mean, they are, to my understanding, they are trying to do what they can to, to minimize uh, civilian casualties. Um, the promise, so like, you know, Jenk has this question where he says, you know, you have, you know, someone who's killed your family, uh, and then they're hiding in a room with nine innocent people. You know, I don't kill them. I don't, I don't blow up the whole room just to kill that one guy. Cause that's what terrorists do. That's what terrorists do. And I say, okay, that's fair. But what do you do when that guy who's hiding in that room keeps killing you and your family? And your citizens, and then running back and hiding in a room of nine people. And those people don't have the ability, they're not your citizens. They don't have the ability or authority or even, you know, the power or the will to hand over that terrorist to you. What do you do at that point? How do you get that guy? Do you yeah. send in a bunch of people, you know, on the on the ground to to create a long, protracted, bloody ground war where a bunch of innocent civilians will die, where a bunch of your innocent military defense forces will sacrifice their lives to protect the civilians of a foreign country's lives. Um, this is kind of why, and I talked about this on Sunday, this is kind of why, you know, I, I understand the horrible human cost and civilian casualties uh, to the Palestinian people, but I still just, I haven't heard someone propose anything resembling a reasonable alternative to me or as horrible as what's happening is i don't know what the alternative is and i haven't heard anyone say anything that would that would make sense the alternative is the special forces go in and take care of business kill all the bad guys save all the hostages yeah but i don't like, that's like a fantasy that's not like a real yeah I, that's the thing i don't know if it's technically feasible yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, if, if you had a magic special forces who could pinpoint kill all of Hamas without dropping any bombs, that would be what you would do. There's no reason that's not what you would do, right? Because then you would actually, you know, the population would probably be very happy about that. And you build a lot of goodwill towards, you know, Israel from the Palestinian population. Right. Like, I don't believe this idea. Like, some people push this idea that, like, the Israeli government just wants to just kill all the Palestinians and drive them all away, you know, so they could just bulldoze the whole area. And I I don't I don't think that's accurate. I don't think it's remotely accurate what's going on here. I think they'd behave very differently if that's what's going on. And even if that's what they wanted, I don't think they even could act that way. Do you think um, there are elements that want that? I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. Right. But I don't think that that's the I don't think those are the people in power making decisions. That's the question for me. I don't know how much of the Israeli population is in that element that wants that. And with the the horrific nature of these attacks and the fact that they still are holding hostages, I feel like it's probably a high number and rising. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. No, this I mean, I like get a it. Right? Totally messed up situation. Yeah, I definitely get it. But that's that's why it kind of annoys me about kind of the way this conversation is always had.
is that it is a messed up situation. And you have a situation where you have a government, like you have a government that you can kind of interact with and deal with. And then you have one that you can't really interact and deal with because it's really a terrorist organization. But it's yeah. also holding its own population hostage too. And that's kind of the the horrible tragedy of the situation is, well, how do you deal with that? I mean, you know, it's funny. I had this conversation with my my parents the other day about this. And I said, because they were saying like, oh, it's, you know, it's just so horrible that you know, because they see the number, the rising number of, of, of Palestinians dying. And they have, you know, they're very left wing and they have a lot of left wing moral intuitions. And their their immediate emotional reaction is to say, you know, Israel shouldn't be doing this. This is horrible. Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I kind of said the same thing. I said, like, well, I don't disagree. That it is horrible. But I just, what is the alternative? I, I'm not sure I understand what the alternative is. I haven't heard anyone bring forward a convincing argument to me about what like what the better way to do this would be. Um, if there was a better way, obviously I'd be in favor of it. But they're saying it's horrible that you have to kill all these innocent people to get to the bad guys, right? To get to Hamas. And I said, well, that's kind of, that is the tragedy of war. That's all war is. War is killing a bunch of innocent people to get at the people that are the actual bad people. That are guilty, yeah. Yeah. Like all the all the like all the soldiers and troops, just because they put on a military uniform, they're still innocent people, most of them. They're like, you know, they go and die for some king or some president or some dictator, you know, that what do they give a crap about? You think they really care about this cause that much? Dying to get to get justice. That's what they're doing here. So it's just it, like they're I mean, seeking justice, but they're still gonna die. Right. It's kinda of like you know, I saw people that were like applauding. You know, they there are these videos that are coming out of like Ukraine, and it's like some Russian soldier getting like blown up or something or dying. You know, you've seen these drone footage things, and I see all these people like celebrating this, and I don't know. I look at it, and I'm, I'm not celebrating it because I'm like, you know, the, there's all these like Russian soldiers that are conscripted; they're forced into service by their government. You know, Putin is an authoritarian dictator. Those soldiers, they don't have an option. If they don't go into war, they're going to go to jail for like, you know, maybe forever, right? So I'm not saying it doesn't mean you shouldn't kill. Obviously, the Ukrainians still kill those soldiers, but I'm not going to cheer it on and be like, ha ha, fuck that guy. It's like, he, that guy is a victim too. Yeah. And this is like kind of the emotional difficulty that we have to grapple with as mature adult humans is a lot of times in life, there's the evil problems and there's the no-win scenarios and there's victims on both sides of a conflict. And just because there's victims on both sides of a conflict doesn't mean that one that you don't support one side, right? Yeah. So it really bothered me that the United Nations made a declaration for a ceasefire. Mm-hmm. And they didn't make a declaration to release the hostages. And people were arguing that, well, you know, they're, the United Nations can speak to the Israeli government. They can't really, they don't have any control over Hamas. Right. But the declaration, the, I, they don't call them declarations. I can't remember what they call resolution. them. The resolutions, yeah. yeah. Th those resolutions are non-binding anyway. I mean, they right. say, you know, Israel has to do a ceasefire, this non-binding resolution. They don't have to do the ceasefire, and they're not going to do the ceasefire. So why can't they do one, a non-binding resolution for Hamas, release the hostages? It's it's performative anyway. It makes people feel better. It's yeah, just, no, it's so stupid. That's a great point. Um, you know, my like I ne I didn't know that about the hostages. I know that I'd heard that the UN never put out anything official denouncing they didn't. October seventh. Yeah. Um, and if they haven't done that and they haven't put out anything to release the hostages, you're right. It's completely insane that then they would demand for the ceasefire. And it is kind of disgusting and reprehensible. It completely. is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Put a resolution out. Look, these people's families are there. They're, look, it's tragic. They're, they're just, can you imagine going to sleep at night knowing that your wife or daughter is over there? Can you imagine that? Not knowing if they're alive or dead in some tunnel somewhere? Right. That's like, two, there's 240 people in that state. Of course. And everyone's, you know, parading the bodies out on the, on the news. And you got, you know, college kids over here in fucking New Hampshire peeling down the 
the missing sides. Right. It's crazy. They make multiple statements on social media and on television. Oh, they paused, media. they said 24 hours to escape. UN said it's impossible. Escape so they said, the what? So they, escape to, to the, the south. what? It's an the open south. air prison. To the south. To and the then south, Egypt which can they open that border if they like. They bombed it a little bit to get rid of a all the Hamas targets. It's not. You know, I don't like that open air prison frame at all. <laughs> That's like. Right. And look, if it, it, it's just, I don't like. I don't like the escalation of terms because one person says, look, I can call it an open air prison. Then another person can come along and say, well, all the Palestinians are jihadis. It's like, come on, let's just, let's try to accurately assess the situation here. Right. Right. Or, um, you know, people that call it a concentration camp. Yeah. Know, that one's a big one. And then, cause it, the thing that's annoying is like the rhetoric matters. It does and, matter. And unfortunately, it is word thinking. But word thinking is how many people think. Because if you, you know, I heard so, like all the people that were like justifying it, either in, like soft or hard. That's justifying. their justification. Yeah, 100%. October 7th. Yeah, yeah, they would say, well, these people were in a concentration camp and they break out of their concentration camp. You know, of course, they killed a bunch of innocent, you know, uh, young adults and teenagers that are dancing in the area they broke out of their concentration camp like as if that justifies anything it's just insane insane comment to make yeah not the main area that the main bombing is happening and so that is the reality of war you're still not ever suggesting concretely how you suggest no, that I Israel know, lives in peace and uh -oh, possibly can i peace. answer please sure it's so easy yeah okay special forces to take to take out the hamas guys who attacked no problem i've said it from day one try to release the hostages find do a negotiation do a power do all the things that you do then this is super important End the goddamn occupation. There is an occupation in Gaza. I'll oh, say it from damn Gaza. Be... <laughs> okay, on the. In That's the a good pause. Don't be insane. Well, just on the special forces, guys. Yeah. Have you seen those tunnels, Sitch? The tunnels are two meters tall and one meter wide. Yeah. It's literally like a guy can walk through it single file. It's like a death corridor, yeah. You don't think that thing is bull is booby trapped all to Oh it is. I haven't. I've seen videos about it. yeah, they're all booby trapped to hell. And if they know you're coming down there, I mean it's, that's a that's a death corridor to walk down. It there. is, yeah. Sure. They got a howitzer at the one end of it, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the difficulty of the situation. Is because I don't know if they have the I mean I know they have all these sorts of techniques and stuff, but I don't it's like you know, we don't have the the magic drones that fly into the tunnels and can just, you know, assassinate all the Hamas people in the tunnel. Yeah. Have you have you seen the sponge bomb? I have seen the sponge bomb, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is it's just cool. But <laughs> you know, that's why like the whole like th and I guess this is where the disagreement is. And I, I think this is a post hoc disagreement, which is that or it's 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 probably not post hoc disagreement. It's a disagreement based on how we're assuming people are operating. Because I think Jenk and other people are operating from a a presupposition of like of uh, malice uh, and evilness from the Israeli government in terms of like wanting to just kill all these people. As I opposed, agree, you yeah. Know, and I'm operating, and you're operating from the idea like, well. I don't believe that that's like the presupposition that the Israeli military is operating from, um, that they do just want to get rid of Hamas. So therefore, this kind of like magical special forces thing doesn't exist, or at least it doesn't exist in the capacity that you're talking about. And if they were just to send individual forces into these tunnels to try to root out Hamas, I mean, the death toll on the Israeli side would be like, you know, they'd just be throwing men in like a, a meat grinder down there, essentially. Yeah, the Israeli people would not be happy about that. You, no. you look, our friends and family got kidnapped and then you sent my son and husband to die in a meat grinder. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a good, not, not a good, a good look. Yeah, not a good look. So. You do. Then this is super important. 
end the goddamn occupation. There, there is an it. occupation in Gaza. I'll oh, say it ben, to the day of Don't month. be insane, There ben. is a security don't and, be and, 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 and blockade of supplies. There is not an occupation. They voluntarily ended it in 2005 and removed forcibly their own Israeli citizens. Hey. How are you going to ask people to end an occupation that ended in 2005? And at least let's use words accurately. Because I've seen too many times on this network people saying genocide when it is not one. People yes. saying occupation when it is not one. There is an occupation in the West Bank. I admit it because that's the definition and the words. But when the occupation ends, you say, and the occupation, what are you asking for them? To end it again? Should they so, go back in and then end it again? Is that the request? Ben, um, okay, if I come to your house and say, look, I'm not occupying your house, but I can cut the water and power anytime, right. and I could starve you, and I could make sure you don't even get any water, and if you disagree with me on anything, I could drop a bomb on your head. It's but hey, I'm not occupying. It's called a blockade. Oh, I'm not occupying. It's called a blockade. I can just murder you anytime but it's I not like, but I'm not occupying. But it's not the word. Okay, it's called so a blockade. Let's call it a prison. So as Israel should stop in prison. So, well, <laughs> Uh, see, but this is always interesting. This is always fascinating to me because this, this always happens. And I feel like when we get in these conversations where it's like someone uses a word wrong and they're describing something as bad and they try to like hide in the vagueness of the term. And it's like, well, but why are you like if the word is wrong, the word occupy or occupied is wrong. Why are you using it? Why are people attached to using it? Because it it's not a big deal. talking past the sale. It makes the argument. That's why yeah. they do it. They do it because exactly. it's sneaking in a premise. Right, and it goes completely with the colonizer uh, premise. You know, when we, when America blockaded Japan from getting oil, you know, before our involvement in World War II, were we occupying Japan because we prevented them from getting oil? No, right? No. Of course not. And even then, it's like, you know, going back to Gaza, you can't just say like, oh, well, we occupy them. It's like, yeah, but if if Israel is blockading Gaza from getting things, it's because Hamas is taking those things and turning them into weapons and tunnels, which what happened on October 7th proves undeniably. Does it not? Yeah, of course. I mean, imagine if all that time and energy and money and resources that Hamas uses that either the Hamas people suck up for themselves and go live, you know, as billionaires in another country, or they use to make all these tunnels, all the time and energy and money to make all these tunnels. What if instead that was building infrastructure for the country? Building right? restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. Police stations, highways. restaurants, highways. Yeah. What if all yeah. that schools, hospitals? They don't want like, police the, stations. Are you kidding me? That threatens their power. There you go. But that's what I'm saying. Like, and this is kind of why it's annoying when people say, like, you have to end the blockade. It's like this, everything that's happened has shown literally why they're doing the blockade. It just shows that they didn't do the blockade good enough because they were still getting all these materials somehow anyway. Through tunnels. Tunnels for sure, Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, it's horrible. They're using the words that they're using so that they can smuggle in. A number of presuppositions. Like, if you accept right. the open air prison framing, then you're accepting all of these other ideas covertly. You know that people don't have the ability to move freely. That people are being subjugated by another population. Right. Yeah. That they have no freedom. That they're oppressed. Yeah. Exactly. Palestinians and, and you know the big difference though is that when you have prisons the 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 prison the people that run the prisons don't offer freedom to all of the people six different times and they reject it when they get 85 to 97 percent of their requests i've seen you shake off in interviews your head about saying they've been offered peace you go like this you go no 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 but they have been offered peace ben, many I times can... so, so shouldn't they accept that what is your plan why aren't you telling hamas right now release the goddamn hostages accept peace make a peace agreement put on paper put on put your work your, your your money where your mouth is and offer a solution don't just keep demonizing israel and not offering a way to solve the goddamn problem because that goes on forever. So two things about that, Ben. One. No so before he answers, I want to say this is, a, this is a very interesting psychological problem that I've brought up before. And we see this a lot. People don't realize they're falling into this trap and you need to because everyone falls into this trap. This is the, the psychopath at work problem. There's always that one guy at your office. Who's well, like I know piece. him. He's like a piece of crap, okay? 
he's like he's like very difficult to deal with hyper aggressive or just like he won't do anything and everyone has to like work basically around that person right yeah and i don't just mean like a boss or something i mean like he'll just be like a normal employee someone that could be you know potentially fired or removed and the problem is there's like this weird thing that happens in our mind psychologically when a person is very unreasonable people just like accept it like they're like an animal they accept it like there's some kind of force of nature you just have to deal with you know like oh well this person's always going to be unreasonable so i just put that into my brain calculation so then i forget that they're unreasonable and then i kind of like hold other people like the i hold the reasonable people responsible for their actions but i don't hold the unreasonable people responsible for their actions and right. we all fall prey to this and this situation with Israel and Hamas is like the perfect example of this. And I think what Ben just laid out is so on point where it's like the only reason that there's, well, actually not the only reason, because a lot of it is the oppressor, oppressive white colonization lens, which is toxic. But putting that aside, people fall in this trap because they look at Israel. Israel is like a democracy. And so they look at it like, well, Israel is a reasonable country composed of reasonable individuals with a reasonable government that you can talk to where Hamas is an unreasonable government uh, filled with terrorists. And so right. since they're unreasonable, like we just don't expect anything from them. And so we don't even attempt to make any sort of calls for them to do anything reasonable whatsoever. So we just I'm, accept that they're unreasonable. I'm so glad you brought this up because this plays out in the conversation perfectly. He's okay. basically making the argument that, you know, why aren't we making demands of Hamas? Yes. and people just always just brush that oh of course they're unreasonable we can't make demand <laughs> they're murdering psychopaths <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> of course we can't we can't make demands of them well so why yeah, but, not exactly but so that's the thing like you're like oh well then that has to be that's why what's happening is happening because you have unreasonable people that are psychopaths that you can't deal with Right, yeah. Except by killing them. But everybody wants to put it on the reasonable people. Yes. Everyone's yeah. like, look, you know what it's like to deal with unreasonable people. We just have to suck it up and let them do what they want. Yes. No, exactly. <laughs> no, right. don't. Well, I, I feel I feel horrible for the for the Palestinian people. Of course. Because they're they're just as subjugated by these these monsters as yeah. As 100%. Israel is. Yeah. 100 percent yeah. As Israel is. Um, but it's in this, this thing, and it, 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 it goes into the thing that triggers me, which is I always get triggered when people penalize people for being reasonable, for doing the right thing, for, for trying yes. to do the right thing. And they always, uh, incentivize people who are doing the wrong thing. And this is what this attitude does. People don't realize this is what's happening here, but that's exactly what's happening in this conversation. I, I don't mean this specific conversation. I mean like the general conversation. No, I'm, about I'm pretty part. sure. I'm pretty sure it happens in this conversation. Well, we'll see. Too. I guess we'll find out. Let's continue. Number one, mission accomplished. Hamas, uh, do a ceasefire, never attack Israel, uh, recognize their right to exist, release the hostages. Obviously, obviously. And uh, by the way, here, I'll, I'll make, no, hold on. I'll make it even more uh, like concrete. Hamas, stop being goddamn idiots. You're destroying the Palestinian cause as well as being immoral. Well, you kill those innocent Israeli civilians, now 10 times as many Palestinians have been killed. Are you happy? Was that mission accomplished? It is profoundly stupid. And it's easy for Hamas leaders to do that as they sit comfortably in Qatar right. and they condemn their own civilians to death. Ben, being against a terrorist is obvious, is right. obvious, okay? But but having but a plan it, to defeat them oh, is much but, harder. And that's but the whole Ben, point. you have to stop imprisoning them. What? Look, Ben, if if people come over, let's say they take, uh, they name any place. They take New Jersey, they take Texas, and they say, okay, now you're in an open air prison and none of you have any goddamn rights. And we get to put our boot on your neck and now you're, going, you're our servants. You're, you're subhuman. Now you sit there, Texas, and take it. And if any of you ever fight back, you're all goddamn terrorists in Texas. What do you think Texas would do? Texas would blow up, those Texas citizens would blow up every goddamn occupier, and you know it. Nope. They would murder every occupier, and you know it. Great. How much patience can the Palestinians have? They're sitting there. Yep. The is, it, is this an accurate assessment of what's going on in Gaza? I don't think so, no. Is, are the Israelis <laughs> basically subjugating them like this? No, no. Well, first of all, 
I mean, it's interactive for two reasons. Number one, as you said, I, I don't think it's fair to say like Israel has the boot on the neck of every Palestinian person in the West Bank. I mean, in Gaza, you know, at all times, like that they're living in some open air prison slash concentration camp because there's like a lot of restrictions in terms of what can be imported or not. I think if you were to do side by side, um, Hamas being in charge of Gaza has probably significantly like, them more. Yeah. He has like way more subjugation, way more uh, responsibility for creating the bad living conditions of Gaza. And if Hamas wasn't that way, if they were reasonable instead of unreasonable, you know, even with uh, blockades and restrictions like that, you know, their life would be, you know, dozens, hundreds of times better. That's the first thing. And the second thing is that annoys me when people have this conversation about the blockade is Israel didn't just do the blockade because they're like evil. They did the blockade because when they ended the occupation, which is what the people wanted, you know, in the early 2000s, you know, Hamas and other organizations started sending suicide bombers into Israel and started getting right. weapons into Israel and started doing all these things that now that they're their quote own country, they could do. And so what is Israel supposed to do if they're living on the border of a country that's importing all this dangerous weapons and material that is used explicitly to destroy Israel? What is Israel supposed to do? They can either a blockade the country and 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 be restrictive about what they let into it, or they could occupy them again. Those are the only two options. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a, a it's such a difficult situation because obviously it's a win win for Hamas to keep the Palestinian people in terrible conditions, right? Because it it foments resentment against. Israelis, which is their the scapegoat that's keeping them in power, keeping Hamas in power. So Hamas has no there's no incentive for Hamas to make the Palestinian lives better. If they do make the Palestinian lives better, chances are they will their power will slip. Right. Because of the population will be less resentful towards Israel. <laughs> They'll start thinking women should be able to drive cars. Like it's just a it's a mess. So right. Yeah, Hamas is the problem here. Hamas has to go. So I just, all this, like, I guess everyone agrees that Hamas has to go. We're just arguing over the strategy of getting rid of Hamas. Yeah. The West Bank doing nothing. They've been perfectly peaceful. Just and what did they get for the peace, Ben? What did they get for the peace? Just all they got was occupation. Just 56 peace. years of occupation. They've been offered peace. Six times. So when you keep somebody okay. in a prison, as you say, what do you mean my ass? They have not been? Yes, they were I will not explain. In, I will explain. In, in, in I will 37, explain. 37, 48, 67, 2000, 2008. Who's the guy that's just sitting on the side as these guys are like about to go to blows? That's Mark Thompson. He's like, uh, I'm not going to say anything. It's <laughs> just like every time it cuts back to him, his chair is like, another four inches away from the fight slowly like just he, he like rolls the chair slowly <laughs> off the set with the hey, they were not heard an amazing uh like comedy bit like this insane fight is going on he just slowly intentionally like every time there's a pan out just moves further it further cuts away. back to him he's like halfway his split in the frame yeah. but i should say regarding their argument it's interesting because what they're they're both saying things that are true uh which is that you know, what Jenk is saying is true. And this is what I've criticized Israel for their, what I think has been their their biggest, most immoral fuck up uh, in modern history is the settling of the West Bank. Because yeah. you do have seemingly uh, the West Bank is not, you know, there's violence going there, but it's obviously not like Hamas and Gaza. And so they're doing the thing. They're disincentivizing people to not be violent because like, oh, you're not violent. Well, then we will have settlers come in and occupy and slowly push you out of your land. Right. So Israel itself is has responsibility here because they are incentivizing Hamas, people like Hamas and, and Palestinians to support people like Hamas because they look at the West Bank and they say, listen, those people were working with you and you fucked them. Or yeah. at least they were working with you to a better capacity of not being violent. And you fucked them and you totally fucked them over. And Israel did. I think it's a completely true, uh, accurate point. Um, so that's completely true. Uh, but then Ben, what Ben is saying is true, though it's not directly related, which is that before all those settlements came up, 
Well, there were some, but before they became as extensive as they were, it is true that, you know, there was two state police solutions that were offered time and time and time and time again, and they kept getting turned down time and time and time again. So the West Bank situation is closer to apartheid in that they have Israeli settlers in the West Bank that are protected by Israeli soldiers. And they've set up a bunch of checkpoints and made life difficult for the people who, you know, theoretically it's their land, it's country, their nation. Right. Yeah, their yeah. country. Right. So, I mean, that's completely messed up. That's not the situation in Gaza though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. So, that's true. You figure Gaza would have had a, a better shot. But well, the no. problem is it's like Gaza and Hamas being violent gives the bad actors in the Israeli government the political capital to settle the West Bank in the first place. You're right. You're right. Because they're shooting the missiles and Iron Dome is shoot, shooting them down all the time, but it's a constant provocation. Right. Because they say like, oh, because this is because this is a lot of like I've heard this is like the Israeli argument that are pro settlement. They say, well, we pulled our settlements out of Gaza and look what happened. They became violent, horrible, you know, Hamas people, terrorists. Right. And so therefore, obviously, this is why we should be sending more settlers into the West Bank to prevent that situation. Now, I think that's a horrible argument, but that's the argument that they make. And so that's the issue. It's like you have bad, bad actions from bad actors allow other bad actors to make bad arguments and do other bad actions. Right. I just, I've, is it a racist thing? I feel like maybe it is. Like there's the analogy of the South during like Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. Is there that kind of hatred going on between the Palestinians and the Israelis? It, it has to be in some places, right? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Took us a long time to get past that. Definitely. You know, yeah. I think it's going to take a long time to get past oh, yeah. this. Their own no. state? And they said, no, 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 no. So, yes, no. if murderers no. and terrorists are going to keep killing you and you keep saying, here, I'm giving, you, I'm giving you what you want. I'm giving you most of what you want. And you keep saying, no, 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 no. Okay. Nobody on can earth, yourself can included, I, I would it? also allow themselves to keep being can killed I say by it? Them. Okay. That little thing that janked it with the air quotes for the terrorists. Ugh not good when did he do i wasn't looking he did that just now or in the past yeah i mean we can back it up but he's in do in that action he's basically saying that they're like freedom fighters right they're not right. they're justified in what they're doing yeah but who's he referring to i mean that's that's the danger of that because like there's a lot of that's a lot of different categories of people we're talking about this is why i hate the oppressor oppressed lens because right. All of a sudden, it's justified as soon as they're, as soon as they're labeled oppressed. Yeah, I don't know that it is justified. Look, this is this is a Christian slave morality. Speaking up, mm -hmm. you can't Definitely. do bad things just because you're oppressed. That's your cro that's called your cross to bear. <laughs> got to suck it up. You got to make the best of what you got, even if it is, even if you are oppressed. Mm -hmm. Here, let's uh, back it up. Okay. So Give me what they weren't offered their own no. state, and that they said no, me. no, 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 no. So yes, no. if murderers no. and terrorists are going to keep killing you, and you keep saying, "Here, I'm giving, you, I'm giving you what you want." I'm... <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Yeah, good. yeah. You know, that's, that's why good. the uh, you know we're talking about like Christianity being the slave religion and all that stuff. Um. Which, by the way, I know if you don't know what we're talking about, it's going to sound really bad. And it's kind of too long to get into this clip. Um, but that's part of why, you know, Marx was like Christianity is the opiate of the masses. And religion is the opiate of the masses. Yeah, because he, he wanted the master morality to step he, up. Yeah, the dominant, the, you know, might makes right sort of uh, mentality to, to crop up. So Yeah. I'm giving you most of what you want, and you keep saying no, 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 no. Okay. Nobody on can earth, I yourself can I, included, can I would also it? allow themselves to keep being can killed I by it. Okay, so 
Number one, 1937, at that point, Israel doesn't even exist. A bunch of people come over to Palestine and go, now you guys, this is your land, but we're planning to take half of it. So why don't you just give us half? And then move, God, move out of your freaking houses. We own that land now. Oh, You didn't take it. Well, what a bunch of bad guys. I was gonna take your goddamn land and I was gonna make you march and then maybe die. Oh, you didn't take what generous offer that I gave you. 1948, I'm gonna take half your land. Give me your land, you, you can stay, you get the hell out of here. I'm more important than you. Oh, you don't own your land anymore. Well, you didn't take it. Why didn't you take it? What a lovely deal I gave you where I only steal half your land. Okay, now you moved to later. Okay, wait, my understanding is that's not even remotely a fair representation of, of the issue. Cause I mean, I, my understanding, I could be wrong. My understanding was in the original 1948 deal, Anyone could live in the other country. You could be an Israeli, a Jewish Israeli person and live in the Arab Palestinian region or an Arab Palestinian living in the Jewish Israeli region. Like that was allowed. They weren't forcing anyone to leave and that you would have full rights to the country. But it was just like, this is where the country is going to be. Like, and you'll have to live under the government. Like, maybe you'll want to live under that government. But I don't believe in 1948, they're saying, no, 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 you have, like, be wrong. I don't think they were saying you had to, like only Jews were allowed to live in this area. Like that came after the war when they were attacked that they were kind of, you know, more restrictive. There's a reason 20% of Israelis are Palestinian. Because yeah. it's a better economic system, it's a better place to live, right? Better legal system, better economic system. So I'm sure people who have the opportunity are saying, look, I'm going to immigrate there or they're born there and they're like, why would I go to the other place? Oh my God, it's it's fine here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but I'm just saying, so his characterization to me, that's it, not my understanding of an accurate characterization of the situation right. either. And also, you know, when he says like, well, it's their land, you know, obviously there was a lot of Jewish people living there at the time. It was like 30% of the population was Jewish. Right. So it's not like they just said, oh, you know, we're just going to kick you all off your land because, you know, suck it up. Like, that's not really what was going on in the situation. I don't think that's a fair characterization. Obviously, the Palestinians should have 100%. And in retrospect, obviously, they shall, I assume everyone agree with this, in retrospect, the Palestinians should have 100% have accepted that deal. Like, if that deal was accepted, you know, this whole situation probably would never have occurred. But as we talked about, you know, in past shows, now, there was a difficulty with like who exactly is representing the Palestinians in 1948 because it wasn't like they had an official government that was like unified as one voice, the way that like the Jewish population was able to kind of uh, galvanize around like a singular like entity or body because the, the Palestinians in the region didn't exist as a country that was independent. They existed as individual like cities or individual villages under the Ottoman Empire and then under the British. And then, so like a lot of the voices were not people representing the population, they were voices that were representing the surrounding uh, Arab countries who didn't want, they didn't want an independent Palestine, they just wanted to absorb the region for themselves. So, right. not a fair characterization in 1948. Rounds, then it gets more complicated because then they come back in and they go, I'll give you 87% of your house back. But I had 100% of my house. And by the way, you're not even giving me the 50% you already took. You're giving me 87% of the other 50%. Well, there's no solution okay, forever. hold on, hold on. But at this well, then even that's like, well, you know how sometimes you hear people on the left say, listen, it's not cancel culture, it's accountability culture. Your right. words have this, this, is, this is the argument he's making right now. Right. Like, you know. You you know your your actions have consequences, right? Your words have consequences. Well, if you go to war and lose, <laughs> there's going to be a consequence to that, right? You know, and I I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, well, he's ma he's making the argument that Israel should have never taken the land. That's what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, there should never. Yeah. I understand that, but that's I don't agree with that state. I mean. I would agree with that statement in retrospect, right? But, you know, at the time... Well, they you know, went to war because Israel took the land, right? And Israel kicked their butts and the rest is history. Well, so you had the basically... Well, no, England took their land, 
Right, and gave England it took to their land. gave it to Israel. So, well, no, I mean, no, like, England took their land, and then it was such a hassle that they said, "Here, UN, you deal with this shit." And the UN uh, drew up the 1948. Was borders. it the UN or was it the League of Nations? The previous. It was the UN. This is this is this is when the UN existed. Okay. Um, and yeah, so this is like one of the I guess his early days of the UN. They draw up the borders, the 1948 borders. Israel accepts that. Um, the surrounding Arab countries and whoever's representing the Palestinian people at the time don't accept that. Israel says, oh, you don't accept it? Well, too bad for you. We're just going to declare it Israel now. And they just did. Uh, and then the U and then the United States, like first country that recognizes them. And then the surrounding Arab countries go to war against um, Israel as soon as they, you know, as soon as they declare that they're a country. Yeah, they're going to take their land back. Right. Well, Didn't work out that well, way. Well, and also like, well, see, I don't even like using the word like take their land back because again, the surrounding Arab countries, it wasn't their land. They wanted the land, right? You know, Jordan wanted the West Bank to declare it for Jordan. You know, Egypt wanted to, to grab the south part of Israel slash Palestine to declare part of Egypt. Okay. Like so it wasn't it was, their land in the first So it was place. just a British colony. It, yeah, it was because it was just, an, so you had before the Brits had it. It wasn't a country. It was just the Ottoman Empire controlled a giant chunk of this region. Right. And all these independent cities and villages didn't identify as like Palestinians. They didn't identify as part of this region. They just identified as, well, we're part of the city that I live in and we're Ottoman citizens. Like there was no, there was no country based um, identification at that point. It's just like America. We just pulled up and it was like, oh, look. Nobody's calling this a nation yet. Yeah. I mean, sort of. I mean, it's kind of what happened, right? Well, this is the argument that Jank is making. Jank is saying, look, you took the land, made it into a country, colonizer. Yeah, but that's the, the problem. And, you know, I said this when we were talking aristocracy, is that we, you know, are like, we're in a world where liberal democracies are the dominant force. And... If you are a liberal democracy, you can sit down and make an agreement with a liberal democracy. Right. Um, and the UN, a highly bureaucratic um, entity, needs another bureaucratic entity to interact with. And that right. was the big problem in 1948 was that like the Jews had a bureaucratic government system that they could interact with, and the Palestinians didn't have that at all. Yeah, the, this is why it's so important when the U.S. comes in and recognizes it. It's like yes. it gives it the sign of approval. Oh, look, another bureaucracy came in and said it was cool. So, look, we did it. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Exactly. Right. That's exactly the thing. So, Steve and Cope. I mean, that's essentially what they said. <laughs> How? It's been 50 years, though, right? It's been 70 years. Okay. So, where we, we came, we pulled up in America decide to make it America. Right. Where were we at 70 years into it? I feel like we were still fighting about it. Uh, well, it depends where, where's the starting Maybe point. Maybe not. It Maybe depends not. what the starting point is. Like, is 1776 the starting point? Or like, because obviously there are, you know, uh, oh, you're European right. European settlers fighting with Native Americans long before 1776. For like 100 years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. The, yeah, and not only that, it was kind of culturally the norm to pull up and just take the land away from people who, I mean, master morality reigns supreme over the, over the various nations. Even though it was a Christian nation. Yeah. yeah took a while. Took a while. But yeah, no, well, yeah. Cause I think it's more like liberal principles that were like, mm, maybe we shouldn't be like doing this. Yeah. Cause maybe yeah, colonization about, was the norm back then. So Maybe we should think about the rights of the individual. There especially you go. since we're taking all of their land and yeah. turning them into refugees. Right, right. At the same time, well, do I wish 87%, 83, 97, whatever the goddamn number was that both sides took it? Yes, I wish they both took it. And I wish okay, Israel made good. a better offer and I wish the Palestinians took a bad offer. So that's the solution so, then. Yes, ex exactly. Okay, but at well, this good. point, he, uh, both Obama and Trump have said, Netanyahu doesn't want peace. He hasn't offered peace. He doesn't want peace. He wants permanent occupation. So for God's sake, fire Netanyahu. If it's a democracy, fire him. Because if you don't fire him, you're saying, yeah, I like what he's doing. 
I, we're going to occupy these poor people forever. In West Bank, there's no violence except by the settlers. On that, but I still, totally agree. But they're On still occupying. Totally but they're still occupying the because they like it. They and like the occupying that. They were trying to remove Netanyahu, and then there was a horrific terrorist attack. They brought him back like four times. Yeah, Look, yeah I, he's, he's, not, he's not a partner for peace. I agree with that 100%. He was funding Hamas to help make sure there was not peace that happens. That is true. But now we're in a reality that is now very hard to unwind unless some concrete solution is offered. Not just simply at telling one side, we know the other side is terrorists, and so we have orders. to just give it in. No, don't give it. But see, but that's exactly what I said, which is that bad the bad actions of Hamas and other people is what creates the psychology in Israel where people support someone like Netanyahu or support the more uh, nationalistic anti-Palestinian um, thought process. Cause like if everyone, if everyone was nice and peaceful, you know, I don't think, I don't think you'd be having these, uh, these issues, right? If the Palestinians didn't have like suicide bombing and all this other stuff that like, I mean, that really like fucks with your head, right? When you have people coming across your border and like blowing up school buses and blowing up like cafes and stuff with suicide bombing, obviously that's going to make people like clamp down and become the unreasonable people, right? They're gonna say, well, there's unreasonable people attacking us. We need to become unreasonable ourselves. Yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So look, I say it all the time on the show. Sooner or later, someone's got to put down the guns. Yeah. Sooner or later, somebody has to say, look, enough fighting. Let's be right. friends. Let's right. work this out. The Abram Accords seem like a step in that direction. It seemed like people did want to move in that well, direction. Well, not, not for the, I mean, they, of course, they didn't really help Palestinians at all. But, no, but. I, I mean, mean, I guess it helped, actually, you know, it helped prevent Israel from annexing the West Bank, but it didn't uh, well, help and them directly. It, all of these, all of these nations at one time or another have had a, Israel must, does, has no right to exist. Yes. Mentality. Yeah. The Abram Accords turn, were a turn away from that. Right. So uh, obviously it would be much better if Palis if Palestinians or Palestine or whatever you want to call it are are part of that, but gotta get uh, sure. some other people to do it and talk them into it. Sure. Seven borders and the occupation. Occupation is a core evil. And if you don't end the occupation, I would do it unilaterally. Here, 67 borders, good luck. You guys are sovereign now, you can have your own police, military, do whatever you like, you cross over and then we come and obliterate you, okay? But it, it, look, that's exactly what happened, Jake. What is he what talking mean? about? What do you mean? Well, look, he said, listen to exactly what he said. This, I would do it unilaterally. Here, 67 borders, good luck. You guys are sovereign now, you can have your own police, military, do whatever you like. You guys are sovereign now. You can have your own military. You can have your own police. Do whatever you like. You cross over and then we come and obliterate you. If you cross over, then we can come over and obliterate you. That's they what crossed happened over in Gaza. Gaza. Yeah. Right, right, right. He's now yeah, he's, yeah. He's referring this to the West Bank. Yeah, but why is he look, he's complaining about Gaza when he's but basically that's the plan he just laid out. That's no, playing no, no. out right now. Right, right. And that's a good point. I'm just saying he he's but that's kind of the issue is the kind of the misstep in the, the mental process here is because he's saying like, yeah, that's what they should do with the West Bank. And then, yeah, the, but that's fine. Why are you complaining about that's exactly what they're doing with Gaza? You, you, they're literally following your plan to a T. Right. You okay, but it, it, this, it, they made a peace deal with Egypt. Do a peace deal. It's not that complicated. Israel, you have got. I, I guess he would argue that the that they're an open air prison and they're subjugated. They because didn't, of the blockade they and yeah, all that. They never got their, yes. Right. I think if they got their police force and military, it would have probably been a lot worse, but. Not to let him go. We all want to go to Israel. We want Israel to be a beautiful, safe place filled with loving people, which it, it, which it is. But we can't go and we can't root for you and we can't do any of these things. If you kill citizens at this enormous rate, and never give any hope to those Palestinians. And they go, huh, they should know that they're defeated. They should know that they are gonna stay occupied for the rest of time. Because so so much of it, he's playing into like the the dignity frame that we've spit on the dignity of the Palestinian people, or Israel has spit on the dignity of the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So much of his framing involves that, that kind of sentiment. Do you agree? Yeah. Because they're guess. savages. Savages. They can't ever have peace. I mean, I don't... Who... I, I mean, I'm listening to a lot of coverage on this. I guess... Look, I guess maybe... Now, look, even on Fox News, I've heard them throw around the savages, monsters, but they're all talking about Hamas. They're not talking about the Palestinian people. Cenk is making the argument Well, some that, people are, but not most people, yeah. Well, look, I'm talking about the news media. I'm not hearing right, it right, in the right. news media. Like some Yahoo on Twitter, I'm sure he is. Like, oh, they're all, all Muslims are monsters, right? Right, right, yeah. But in, who is he? Cenk is making the argument that somebody is saying all the Palestinian people are monsters. And I'm not hearing that in the in the media, in the mainstream media. He, well, I think he's saying he thinks this is what the leadership of the, Israel is operating under this idea. Right. Hmm. They're always doing violence. We're going to occupy them for another 15 Again, minutes. they're not occupied, and the savages are the leadership that is holding them hostage, yeah. the Palestinians. But you know what? Hostage. Israeli leadership are also savages. Ooh. And at this point, they've been seven times as savage as Hamas, which if I'm an Israeli citizen, I'm sickened by that fact. The numbers are horrible and it's in self-defense. And you know that's a difference. Self you know that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. There was so much more to this story. We don't have time to get to it now, but I'll just- So let me ask you a question. Ed. And I feel like people kind of like miss this in the moral calculation here. Okay. So, you have one scenario where there's uh, five people in a room who are sitting there eating breakfast, okay, minding their own business, and you walk into the room and you and you pull out a gun and you shoot all five of those people, right? right. Is that a it's morally not, that's not cool? I said, is that a good action or a morally bad action? That's very bad. Easy, okay. hands down. That's easy. an easy okay. one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Here's scenario two. Right. Um, someone has developed a nuclear missile, right. a nuclear missile, okay? And mm -hmm. they're gonna fire it off uh, from this base. It's gonna shoot up and it's gonna land somewhere randomly in America and just set off a nuke, okay, on a random American city. Right. Unfortunately, this nuclear missile is underneath a nursery with 20 babies in it. Oh, no. 20 innocent babies asleep. Okay. 20 innocent sleeping babies. Right. On the incubators. only way, if you try to, because it's a hypothetical, if you try to disarm the nuke in any possible way, it will blow up where it is. Or actually, it won't blow up where it is. It will go off. It will get, it'll be, it will get launched. Okay. And do its nuke thing to some random place in America. Right. Mm -hmm. The only solution you have is to drop a bomb on the nursery to destroy the nuke, but would kill all the babies. Yeah, you got to kill the babies, man. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible thing, but you got to kill the babies. Right, and so obviously that's like a horrible, horrible situation to kill 20 innocent babies to potentially save a city in America from being nuked. Um, but that's why the morals of the situation are very different and seem very different. And I feel like when people have these conversations, they kind of like do this like move where they like do this jujitsu move where it's like, well, we pretend like it's just a one for one trade or we pretend like the intentions of the actions no longer matters, right? When obviously yeah. the intentions matter very much in the context of people dying matters much. It's not just like a numbers game. Yeah, they want to employ their proportional fairness intuition. They want to say, look, they right. killed 1,400 people. You got a cap, you're killing at 1,400 people, or it's unfair. Right, that's, yeah, right. Exactly. When they're totally ignoring, well, we have an objective here. Yeah. And we're going to kill as many people as it takes to achieve that objective. An objective which you actually agree with. You don't agree with the way in which it's been done, but you agree with the objective. Of course they do. Yeah. Now, doesn't, now to be fair, that doesn't, to be clear, doesn't give them carte blanche to do whatever they want. I'm just saying like you have to enter that into the equation when you're thinking about these from like these moral perspectives is, yeah, what is the intention of the action? So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is why they told them to clear out. 
And look, I, I get it. They're yeah. basically, they're, it's an unthinkable ask. It's like you, you leave your home and all your stuff and, you know, go into a place that's probably dangerous and you don't know anyone. <laughs> It's yeah, no, like, like it's horrible. It is definitely yeah. a horrible thing, right? But uh, the bombs are going to go off here, right? Yeah, it's it's so messed up. It is so messed up. One of the, I just I can't stand that people are making it out to be simple. Just yeah. it's so easy, so right. simple. Look, yeah, there's this. You you just employ the special forces and everyone survives, but there's just these evil, evil people that just want to kill people indiscriminately. Right. That's a very uncomfortable world to live in. I mean, I, I I think it's I think it's better if we live in a world where, you know, people don't want to kill those twenty innocent babies. Yeah. But, so I get it. I'm fine with it. I'm just yeah. that it's people's moral intuitions. That should be their moral intuitions, but well, no, you know? I, I think it's better that we live in a world that people, like, in Jank's world, they're killing the innocent babies because that's really the objective. Oh, right, right, right. I understand. Instead of, the, you know, they could call it the special forces and settle it the easy way, but they're really just angry and they hate these people and they're they're looking for an excuse to kill those people. Yeah. That's a scary world. <laughs> like, that's, that yeah. is the world of the Holocaust. Yes. Yeah. It is a scary world. Yeah. And I, yeah, that's just not accurate at all it's a much yeah. better world that the people are very very upset and have massive trepidation about the fact that they're trying that they're dealing with a hospital situation and they don't want to kill innocent people right they're they're tortured by the fact that they don't know who the innocent people are and who the who the bad guys are and when i look out into the world that's what i see i do see people that are kind of torn up over the situation Yep. So. All right, I think we're almost done. Just briefly summarize, as a reminder, not just are the, the leadership of the Palestinian people in Gaza, the terrorist organization Hamas, they are backed by one of America's enemies, Iran, and they just again celebrated annually as they do the other day, the 1979 taking of Amer Americans hostage at the US Embassy, and there were the chants, Death to America, death to Israel, the, by the people that sponsor the suicide attackers and the terrorists in, in the Palestinian territories, paid for by Iran. And who was speaking at that rally was one of the leaders of Hamas, the envoy of Hamas to Iran in his official office and official capacity. And those are the people that are funding, that people are siding with and acting as though just tell Israel to deal with it, deal with it. No, how about get the world community to stop funding terror and actually be a true partner for peace? So this time when it is offered, perhaps they will take the offer and not dwell in the past forever because everyone's past is very painful in this scenario. The only way forward is to move forward. Iran does fund Hamas. Uh, I despise the leadership of the Iranian government. They're mullahs and they would kill me in a second for being an apostate. I got no interest in them. But that doesn't mean that we should increase hostilities. Do get back into a peace. We had a peace deal with Iran. We had a peace deal, but the idiot Donald Trump took, pulled, us, pulled us out of it to start more conflict. And then, hey, look, uh, Iran, which funds Hamas, all of a sudden Hamas attacks because they're pissed. And by the way, screw them for chanting death to America. But nevertheless, understand where that came from because we did a coup of their democratically elected government. We, we got rid of them and we put in a Shah that stole all their natural resources and gave it to our corporations. Do you think they're chanting death to America out of nowhere just but you because must, they despise but them you for must no run. reason? Native Americans don't chant death to America and we did all the exact I same totally things to agree, them. But that's why you have to have a peace deal, Mark, last word. Well, I just think that on the Iran thing, <laughs> he speaks. There he you speaks. go. I love it. I love he it. speaks. Do you want to hear what Mark has to say? Sure, let's, just... let's listen to Mark. Oh, okay. It is that they hate the West, Jank. I mean, I don't know even that anybody chanting death to America in Iran right now is necessarily responding to what you correctly pointed out was the uh, 
was the installation of the Shah and the removal of somebody who was democratically uh, uh, elected. I also think we have to be a little careful about the rhetoric. We can get a little too caught up in the momentum and the rhetoric can deny certain facts. And even I noticed when you guys going back and forth, all of a sudden we're starting to say things. I know I'm not saying that they're indefensible, but I'm saying some of the rhetoric. Oh, they are indefensible. They are. Uh, is a contagion. And before you know it, uh, I'm seeing it on college campuses and I'm seeing the rise of anti-Semitism and uh, Ooh, a, a, an anti-Muslim sentiment that I think is response to a lot of the rhetoric that's around right now. Those, those are sort of some general comments, but, but wow, it's an ugly situation every which way. Guys, huge emotions here, as you can tell, and different perspectives. I did not notice that. Uh, but but that's okay. As as heated as things get and as upset as we get about the policies and the issues, we have to have the conversations so we can get to a better place. So I appreciate Ben for participating and, and being forceful with his perspective. I appreciate Mark for what he does. So let's come back and let's do it again. Does the does the heated debate get us to a better place or is it calm and measured debate would get us to a better place? Um, I mean, I don't know if like, like one that specifically gets you to a better place than the other one. Um, Because obviously the heated, like if, if this was a calm debate, we wouldn't have watched it. <laughs> right? That's like, I mean, that's like the, 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 bar, the bad part of this. Um, but I don't think I mean, I'm not sure the heated debate necessarily gets you there either. But I do give uh, Jank a lot of props for at least saying what he said at the end of the, the you know, that segment right there. Yeah, we got to get, so. got to find solutions to this stuff, obviously. Right. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad we it. I mean, it was definitely an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I guess we're kind of entrenched in this until oh, there's some kind of resolution. Hmm. Sucks. It really sucks. And on that note, clip it, CT. Mm. Clip it. Clip it. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.